fans. Once again, it is me, Chris Williams, here again with my review of Alita Battle Angel. It was a good movie, like I mentioned in my last video. This video is about the cyborg Alita, a futuristic cyborg warrior who, come, who, come, who hails from the planet Mars. Well, first off, the thing that you should I should mention first is the is the eyes. They don't bother you, and they do explain it in the movie that they are basically a feature that comes from Martian cyborgs. Now, the eyes don't bother you once you get used to them, and you hardly notice them, and they are very charming, charming, and very cool to see in the movie. The special effects that the director and producer have made for this movie are amazing. R Robert Rodriguez and James Cameron have outdone themselves by creating a brand new kind of special effect effect for the CGI of this movie. Galley looks incredibly lifelike and real. Well, as much as you can see that, it's, that it is CG still. But she is probably what a real full-body cyborg would look like in real life. Only you come across that she is a real person, even if she does come, her body does look slightly fake, because her body is artificial, while she, her head and face and skin look incredibly lifelike. And it's a true marvel to see her move around in her cyborg body when it has been unclothed. In, true, in real fashion, you could be believe that this is a real person with it able to move around and, and, uh, and flex her muscles. The artificial quality of Galley is what makes her really look real because you can tell that her skin and body, body are made of artificial materials like plastic and metal. But the skin, the skin is real. And it looks incredibly lifelike, even with her overly large anime eyes. Because they were designed on Mars, and they have give her a rather alien quality. It was probably developed on Mars, because it would probably give her better eyesight in the, in the environment, where she, other people would probably have a harder time with regular eyes being able to see. Oh, I did call her Galley, because that is her name in the original manga. They changed it to Alita for America, so I probably should try to keep referring to her as Alita. This uh, that's the name I originally knew her by because I watched the anime first before I started reading the manga, and the ma and the movie follows the manga very closely, though it does throw in elements from later volumes of the manga that weren't in the original anime adaptation. That this version this movie takes a great deal from like Grishka in the original manga he was quite a bit different character though you do see callbacks to to the original Grishka in the not in the manga than the one in the anime but only slightly he's more of the anime version than he is of the of the manga version of Grishka other enemies like Zapan and uh, the killer cyborgs that that are hired by Victor to kill Alita are incredibly lifelike and incredibly good special effects that, that were put to use to make them. Take this in this one scene, screenshot here of the, of the weapon that Grishka uses to attack Galley with. There are a bunch of chain whips that whip out from his fingers with razor sharp blades. I won't tell you about the fight fight with Alita with who went up against Grishka with the chain blades because I want you to go go out and see Alita Bell Angel yourself. It is a good movie, but it is not as good as I would have liked. They basically uh, take uh, the relationship between Alita and Hugo. Now Hugo is a decent character, but they. He's a far cry from the manga. They basically rip out anything that is really good and really deep about him, but the relationship between her and him is at least good, not great. But as I said, they ripped everything really deep out of it, except for the feelings Alita has. 
In the manga, though, it's a lot deeper and a lot more passionate, but it is a good, a good romantic subplot. Just don't look too deeply into it. And now the relationship itself goes pretty well. She's willing to do all, almost anything. Anything. She's willing to do anything to save Hugo, and he's willing also to give up his dream of going to Zalem to go out and be with with her instead. Zalem being the big sky city that floats and flies above Scrap City that is where they all live. It's all a technological, almost magical, magical thing if you see it, but it has to do with gravity and with this big, big bar that connects it to another city out in space that allows it to float. It's all very scientific and I don't want to go too much into it to explain it to you. Though I might have made one mistake. The city that Alita and Hugo are living in, isn't it really called Scrap City? They have another name for it in the movie, but the Scrap City is what they call it in the manga. Because it's literally all the scrap that falls, that's basically the garbage of, of Zalem. They have a hole at the bottom of the city that they dump all the garbage from. And the people down in Scrap City use all that trash to help build build the buildings and help them live their lives. The Alita was found in the, in, the, in the junkyard under Zalem, so there's a good chance that she was originally from there. Well, well, originally in the movie it's revealed that she, was, she came to be in that junkyard because she was part of a, the war effort on Mars who were attacking Zalem, and when they, when they failed, her, her destroyed body went into a status-like state, causing her to sleep for several hundred years. And she was found by her father figure, Ido, who woke her up and gave her a new body so she could go and become a hunter warrior and learn more about herself. She uses a martial arts technique taught to martial warriors called Pinsir Kunst, a very incredibly dangerous, dangerous fighting style that is cyborg combat for uh, for Martian warriors, allowing her to disassemble other cyborgs with the flip of her fingers and a punch. She even gets into becoming a uh, motorball champion because she wants to go go to Zalem with Hugo. So and then one of the ways to do there is become the mo top motorball champion and they'll let you in automatically. Think of Zalem as the place where all the witch and successful people that that currently live on Earth. But the truth is, you can only go to Zalem if you were actually born in Zalem. But they make exceptions for apparently, for this movie, for the top motorball champion. Even though in the original manga and uh, anime, they never let anyone who was, who was outside of Zalem back in, into Zalem. Not people they've expelled or people who have... Who, uh, who were born on the surface of the earth. Another name they call Scrap City in the manga is a scrapyard. That's for everything, including the garbage dump under Zalem. And all in all, it is an incredibly good movie, and if you have a chance, go see it. In this final screenshot, you get a picture of Zalem right there. You can see the long bar that is part connected to another city. See, the other city and gravity allow this this big metal thing to fly in the sky. Well, not really. It's being pulled out by gravity because that thing is strong enough to hold the city there. Even though, by all sense, it should snap in half and fall down to the ground. And that's all very good and very scientific that it would take too long to explain in this video. And I gave you a a bit, bit of a gist in how to, it would actually work, even though I'm not going to go too far into it. And as we come to the end of this video, I'm going to say, if you have the chance, in fact, I'm really, if you get, make a chance, just go see this movie, support it. We need more science fiction movies like Alita and less like Captain Marvel. So when you have the chance as well, subscribe to my channel Leave a like and leave some comments down, to b down below. I would love to hear from you guys. See you all again soon. Bye. Oh, and one final note. I didn't describe too much of the plot of this movie because I want you all to go and see it. 
Have a great day, folks.